the outside world, Congress often looks frenetic. Sometimes it even appears to be getting productive. And for plenty of weeks at a time, it can seem totally stuck in a boring sort of neutral. But whether the legislative wheels appear to be spinning forward or get totally locked up, there's a pretty predictable rhythm to life on Capitol Hill. The pace of productivity may be haphazard, but the weekly schedule is not. Congress is in session most of the year, 35 weeks in 2017, for example, when the House and Senate are open for business together. Members can go back home to tend to constituent business and politicking, and some go on official trips abroad during all of August, for two weeks near both Easter and Christmas, and during week-long recesses aligned with President's Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Columbus Day, the Jewish High Holy Days, and Thanksgiving. And when they're in town, the pattern stays pretty close to this. Monday is what they call fly-in day for senators, although at least a dozen of them commute from home by car or on the train. However they get to DC though, they can almost always set their alarm for 5.30 and the first roll call of the week. House members rarely have to be back before their first votes at 6.30 the next evening, giving more than 100 members from west of the Rockies all day Tuesday to travel from home. Usually, both chambers start the week with what are called bed check votes. The matter at hand is not controversial, maybe the confirmation of a federal judge in the Senate or the passage of a narrow public lands bill in the House. But even in this high-tech age, party whips have found that there's no substitute for having a few moments of face time with everyone in the rank and file, especially when a more contentious debate and a closer vote is looming later in the week. And after those first votes, senators and congressmen disperse from the Capitol and hustle off to the first and long list of fundraisers, because those who aren't raising cash for themselves are invariably pressed into service, corralling contributions for their colleagues. It's an unrelenting roster of intimate grab-and-go cocktail parties, grip-and-grin receptions, one-on-one -on -one breakfasts on K Street, luncheons with trade association leaders, and surf and turf dinners. All of it can overfill every available social void until the week is over. And it's a money merry-go-round that most lawmakers enjoy only marginally more than having to dial for dollars from one of the airless, windowless call center cubicles at their party campaign headquarters. Tuesday afternoon is the bellwether moment on the Senate side. Both parties have their weekly caucuses over lunch laid out in ornate rooms only about 100 feet apart on the main floor of the Capitol. And after they break up at around two is when the party leaders appear before the banks of microphones to unveil their main talking points about the conflicts that might play out during the week. All day Wednesdays especially, but also Tuesday afternoons and Thursday mornings is when the bulk of the hearings and legislative drafting sessions, or markups, take place. If Congress is gonna pass a headline-worthy piece of legislation, the climactic moment almost always comes in the back half of the week, most often on a Thursday afternoon, but sometimes on a Friday morning. The House Majority Leadership, which has total control over the schedule, generally arranges the final votes so members can walk off the floor in time to catch a Thursday evening flight, or else get to the airport by early afternoon the next day. The Senate schedule is generally subject to the whims of a single senator so the majority and the minority leaders have to work together to get unanimous sign-off on the finale of the week. If a timetable culminating in a vote isn't set by mid-afternoon Thursday, the week's highly likely to end with a whimper. Senators, especially if they're early in their six-year terms, are much more likely to stay in D.C. than House members, especially at a time when almost two-thirds of congressmen have been in office less than a decade and dozens of them sleep in their offices. But no matter where they spend the weekend, they know where they'll need to be when the new week begins.